in a responsive reading that we had in, in Psalm 30, reminded me of something that uh, Hannah was experiencing, the, the lady who, with whom we're going to be discussing this morning. I, uh, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. That's Psalm 30, verse 5, and also in Psalm 30, verse 8, I cried unto the Lord, and unto the Lord made my, I made my supplication. And certainly this is what Hannah was doing. Hannah was a, a lady who lived over 3,000 years ago, but yet we have this account written, recorded for us today in God's Word, as well as many other events that have been recorded in the Scripture. We have this one particular event about Hannah and how she spoke from the heart and how God wants all of us to speak from the heart to Him about something that is on our, a burden upon us, something that is grieving us, something perhaps nobody else knows about, but God wants us to speak from the heart. The prophet Samuel, as you recall, he was a prophet that anointed both King Saul and King David. And Samuel is the answer to Hannah's prayer. He's said to be the last judge and the first prophet of Israel. And he did many things. His name means asked of God. Certainly his mother Hannah, that's what she was asking for. She was asking for a son. And God gave her a son. God answered her prayer. She was speaking from her heart to God. You may not want a son or a daughter. Perhaps you might. But there may be something else that you may want, something else you may desire for God to give to you, something that God can grant your petition. God can fix the problems that man cannot fix. Hannah's husband thought he could fix Hannah's problem. In fact, if you look in, in verse 8 of, of chapter 1, he, he, asked her three, he asked her four questions. Then said Athena, her husband, to her, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Question 1. Why didst thou not? Question 2. Why is the heart grieved? Question 3. And question 4, am I not better than ten sons? Perhaps the most foolish question of them all to ask. But nonetheless, he asked it. But see, he did not have an answer. He didn't have a fix to her problem. Only God was the one that could give Hannah an answer to the prayer that she had. She wanted a son. And Hannah was in the temple, rather, more, more, she was in the tabernacle, the, the text says temple, and it's properly translated temple, but this was before the actual temple of Solomon was constructed. The tabernacle was 50 cubits by 100 cubits, pretty close to the width and the depth of, of this room that we are sitting in today. 50 cubits by 100 cubits, which will be converted to around 75 feet to 150 feet. And Hannah came into this area that was set up. It was set up by Moses in Exodus chapter, give the instructions given in Exodus chapter 35 and following, for the purpose of worshiping Jehovah God. And Hannah came. She and her husband and her adversary came yearly to Jerusalem, to Shiloh, to worship. But Hannah 
had a burden upon her heart. Hannah's name, her name means grace. She had a huge burden upon her heart. When we think of our spiritual members, our members, our physical members, quite often we are thinking of our external members, our hands, our ears, our feet, our eyes, our mouth. But also, we have to think of our internal members, our heart, our mind, our spirit, our soul. I mean, other members we have. Things that control our whole body. Things we don't even know that are operating are part of our members. And we are to yield our, our members to God. And we have a choice today to either have our members yield to uncleanness, unto iniquity, or righteousness unto holiness. Hannah yielded her heart to God. She was speaking from her heart. And today we must understand that our whole persona, our exterior and our interior, must be yielded to God. In the, in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul wrote to that first century church in Romans chapter 6 and he said to them many things but in Romans chapter 6 of course we know of Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord but earlier on in that chapter in Romans chapter 6 he says he writes in verse 19 Romans 6, 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servant to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. We have to yield our members unto holiness. We were once dead in trespass and sin, now we've been redeemed. We have been saved so we can yield ourselves, our hearts, to be servants to righteousness unto holiness. We don't want our hearts to be in the wrong place, going in the wrong direction, that leads us to iniquity. In verse 12 of 1 Samuel, we see that Hannah is continuing her prayer. Verse 12 of 1 Samuel, chapter 1. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now, earlier on in this chapter, going back to verse 9, we see that Eli is there. He's sitting by a, a post of the temple of the Lord. And like, as I mentioned earlier, the temple, the tabernacle of that, at that time was 50 cubits by 100 cubits. And every five cubits there would be a, a pillar, a post of, I think, close to seven and a half feet, or five cubits. Every five cubits there would be a post of his five cubits high, encompassing the entire tabernacle. And Eli was by one of these posts, and he was watching Hannah. He saw Hannah praying. She was continuing praying. She began her prayer in verse 9 of chapter 1. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after he had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And Hannah was continuing her prayer, continuing her supplication. And what was, the, the, what was on her heart, the fact that she was childless, she was barren. And it didn't help the fact that her adversary was provoking her, her adversary, the other, the other wife, the, the other wife of 
Elkanah. She was provoking her because she had children, and yet Hannah had no children. The condition of somebody's heart is very important. It directs us. It directs us and leads us in how we behave and how we act each and every day. Our heart will direct us to do what is right or what is wrong. Prior to the flood, the condition of man's heart was evil, it was wicked, and that's why God sent judgment upon the earth in Genesis chapter 6. We're reminded from the scripture of this condition prior to the days, in the days of Noah, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. And God, that's Jehovah God, if you notice there, God is in all capital letters, capital G, capital O, capital, capital, G, capital, o, capital D. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The imagination is the heart of the time of pride during Noah's day. It was evil continually. Now, we don't want to have wicked imaginations. We should have righteous thoughts, holy thoughts. That should be our goal. We should cleanse ourselves from wicked thinking. We must be directed to holy thinking and holy living. Our heart will, must be pure, must be clean. Now, contrasting the desire of Hannah prior to her time was a man named Abraham. We know who Abraham was. His wife also, Sarah, was in the same situation as Hannah. She was childless. Although Sarah, she was past the age of childbearing. But yet Abraham, he had, he had, a, he had an inappropriate response. In Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 17, we see what, how Abraham responded and how what his, what his heart attitude was and how it directed his life for, for, for a short time. In Genesis chapter 17, in verse 17, Genesis 17, 17, we're reminded what the Bible says, Genesis 17, verse 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said, In his heart shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear. So he said this in his heart. And his heart was controlling the way he behaved. His heart was controlling his response to God. We don't want to respond to God, a promise of God, in a negative way. We want to accept the promises of God. We must accept the promises of God by faith. During the time the tabernacle was constructed, in Genesis, probably in Exodus chapter 35, the, the people responded to the building and constructing of that tabernacle with a proper heart. In Exodus chapter 35, verse 29, the Bible says, The children of Israel brought a willing offering of the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of the work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Hannah, she continued to pray. She wanted to have the burden of her heart answered and responded to by God. Hannah continued praying. She didn't stop. When we think about people in the scripture who continued to pray, who didn't stop praying, we can think of the prophet Daniel. Even when a command was given by the king of Babylon, if 
by the king of Media and Persia not to pray. He still prayed. In Daniel chapter 6, we're familiar with this account, but in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went to his house and made his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He continued to pray. There may be burdens upon your heart. There may be certain specific prayer requests that you have. Continue to pray. Even if a command, a law is issued that says not to, you still continue to pray. Hannah was praying. She was praying specifically for a, a child. What is your specific request that you might have? There may be something that you can't put into words. There may be something that you can't explain what you need or what you want. But pray. Ask the Lord to give you understanding. Ask the Lord to grant you that desire that you have. If it is according to, according to His will, He will grant it to you in time. Later on in the New Testament, in the first century church, in Acts chapter 3, in verse 1, we see again prayer being mentioned. In Acts, in Acts chapter 1, rather Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3 in, ver in, the, in verse 1, Scripture records, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. They went to the temple to pray. Now, you don't have to go to a specific spot to pray. You can pray any place you want to. But in this account, they were going there to pray. And God in His providence was leading them there so they could heal the man that was sitting there at the beautiful gate of the temple. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians that we are to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. And Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, is encouraged and told, I will therefore the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. To pray everywhere, in every place. Hannah was praying. She had a specific request. She was speaking from the heart. She was communicating her request to God. And God's ears were not deaf to her prayers. God's ears are not deaf to your prayers. God wants you to speak from your heart. He wants us to pray to Him. He wants us to have a proper and a suitable understanding of the Scriptures. He wants us to bring every request we have to Him, whether they are small or whether they are big. I don't believe the Lord weighs the prayers in smallness and bigness. We may judge them in smallness and bigness, but He doesn't. God wants us to come to Him as Hannah did. In verse, in, verse thir, in verse 13 of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, Now Hannah, remember her name means grace, Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. Certainly Eli came to the wrong conclusion. She was speaking in her heart. Perhaps her mouth was moving, but no words were coming out of her mouth. So she thought, brother, he thought that she was intoxicated. But the scripture tells us clearly in verse 13, she spake from the heart. 
She spake from the heart. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, one of the books of Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 6, in verse 5, we're commanded. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Heart, soul, and might. That's how we are to love the Lord our God, with a heart. Hannah was coming before Jehovah, coming before God, and she was bringing her supplication. She was speaking with speaking in her in her heart idolatry prevents somebody from serving God in Joshua chapter 24 in verse verse 23 Joshua 24 in verse 23 the Bible states now therefore put away said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. Putting away strange gods. It's odd, but yet real, that the children of Israel, some of them, had strange gods. Probably the same could be said for us today in the 21st century church. Sad but true, some of us have gods, perhaps of not the same sort as those in the days of Joshua, but nonetheless there are strange gods that must be put away. If we're going to speak to God from our heart, we must incline our heart into the Lord our God. And the strange gods that are among us must be must be put away. We cannot be holding on to those strange gods. Because we're holding on to the world. We can't necessarily hold on to God at the same time. We have to either pick if we're going to serve God, we're going to serve Mammon. Who are we going to serve? Hannah, her heart was in tune with God. She wanted to have the specific request of hers answered. She was speaking to God from her heart. But yet Eli, sitting over there by one of the one of the posts of the tabernacle, he she thought, rather he thought that she was intoxicated. She had perhaps from a distance had the symptoms of somebody that was under the influence of alcohol. But yet, she wasn't. She was not. David says in Psalm 25, 1, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Many psalms are records of the prayer and the supplications that David has. Of David lifting up his heart, lifting up his soul, asking God for deliverance from something. And sure, surely, Hannah, she spake in her heart to the Lord, but was lifting up her soul. Sometimes we do not know how to pray, or what to pray. But turning back to the book of Romans again, Romans chapter eight, verse <clears throat> Romans chapter eight, verse twenty six, the Bible tells us that we have a comforter. It reminds us that we have dwelt by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter eight, verse twenty six. Likewise the Spirit also help with our infirmities, for we know not what should we pray. For as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
So when we're praying, as Hannah was praying in the temple, she spoke with her mouth. She may have been judged, she may have been judged falsely and wrongly by Eli, which she was, that she was drunken. But nonetheless, she lifted up her soul to the Lord with the burden that she had. And you too. What are the burden that you have? What are the burden we, we bear upon ourselves and our hearts? God wants to have fellowship with us. He wants us to bring those requests to Him. He wants us to pray continually. To continually pray, like pray without ceasing, as we, we noticed earlier in First Thessalonians. We are, to, we are to pray without ceasing. Now, in verse 14... Again, remember, he had a wrong conclusion. He, he, he thought she was drunk. In verse 14, he confronts her. He says, And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away the, thy wine from thee. Now, Clearly, it's wrong to be drunken. It's wrong to have anything to do with any sort of alcohol, any sort of illegal substance that's going to harm your body. But this wasn't the case with Hannah. She was grieved. She was sorrowful. She was praying to the Lord with her heart. She was speaking unto the Lord with her heart. She was rejoicing. If you look over verse, verse 1 of chapter 2, the Bible says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My, my horror is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. God wants us to serve him with our entire heart. He doesn't want us to, to turn aside from serving him. You know, later on in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 12, 1 Samuel chapter 12, he wants us to continue to follow and to serve and to do what he desires for us to do. And, and we know what he wants us to do by reading the scripture, by looking at the Bible. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness, ye have turned not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Are you serving the Lord? Are we serving the Lord with all our heart? Is there something that's some sin, some iniquity, some transgression that's Stopping the fellowship that we have, preventing us to fellowship with, from, with God. God wants us to fellowship with Him. God wants us to pray. God wants us to have the fellowship with other believers, but also fellowship with Him. God sees our heart. When, there, when we were selected, when David was selected to be king, the second king of Israel, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, God told Samuel, of course Samuel was perhaps looking on the outside, which quite often we do the same thing, but God is not one that looks on the outside. God is one that looks at the heart. God is the one that can see the heart. In 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or in the height of a statute, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Don't be deceived upon what's on the outside. God wants us to speak from the heart. God wants our hearts to be pure, like Hannah, he wants us to come, and He wants us to bring our supplications before Him. Now, Hannah's response to Eli's charge. 
Verse 15. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, for I have poured out my soul before the Lord. All of us have the ability to pour our souls before the Lord. We could do it for ourselves, or we may be able to do it for somebody else in intercessory prayer. We may not be able to go someplace to be encouraged with somebody for whatever reason, but we can pray for them, we can pour out our souls for them in prayer. Hannah was a woman of a sorrowful spirit. She was greatly grieved because she had no son, nor at the time any daughter. And she told Eli plainly, I have drunken neither wine nor strong drink, which is a good thing. People today in our culture, in our society, they should avoid wine or strong drink. It's not, not very popular. Sadly, some people in certain types of circles of Christianity participate in drinking of wine and strong drink. We should put that far from us. It should not be part of our society. It should not be part of our culture as Bible-believing Christians. And Hannah says, I have not drinking wine or strong drink, but I have not poured out my soul before the Lord. Now, what, what are the meditations of your heart? What are the meditations of your heart? David, in Psalm 19, this was his desire. In Psalm 19, verse, verse 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Our hearts, meditations, not so much of our minds, but our hearts. It starts in our heart, perhaps it's transformed to our mind, but the meditations of our hearts. What are the meditations of your heart? What are they? Are our meditations acceptable in God's sight? Later on in the book of Psalms, in Psalm 139, verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts. We want God to be a part of our life. He should be a part of our life every day, every hour, not just one or two hours a week. God wants us to pursue holiness and to pursue the image of his son. Because we know that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, as, as recorded in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. We know in verse 10 of Jeremiah 17, I, the Lord, search the hearts, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. There's nothing we can hide from God. There's no place we can go to hide. We know we've reminded that from, from the, the account of Eden, when Adam and Eve were trying to hide themselves from the glory of God. They could not. They, had, they tried in vain. God wants our hearts to be pure, to be acceptable in His sight. Hannah was pouring out her spirit pouring out her soul before the Lord. And in Psalm 142, in verse, verses 2 and following, Psalm 142, 
We're reminded of how David poured out his complaint before the Lord. Psalm 142, in verse, verses 2 and 3. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knowest my path in the way wherein I walked, had they privately laid a snare for me. Here David, he poured out his complaint before the Lord. Hannah poured out her soul before the Lord. And certainly, we can pour our, pour out our souls, our complaints, our specific prayer requests, pour them out before the Lord so that He, in time, can, can give an answer to us. In verse 16, Han is not finished responding to Eli's charge of her drunkenness or her alleged drunkenness and giving the wine. She, he says, in verse, she says in verse 16 of 1 Samuel, Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hither to. We're to search God with all our hearts and with all our minds. In Jeremiah 29, verse 13, And ye shall seek me, to find me, when ye shall search me with all your heart. Are you searching the Lord with all your heart today? Are we searching for him? Are we looking for answers within his word, for questions that we have? We each, are, each of us are coming from different situations. We have different types of burdens upon our hearts. We have different stress elements of levels of stress in our life, perhaps. But all those burdens, all that stress, all that could be taken away. You know, God, God can take away a stony heart and replace it with a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26. And she said that she was not a daughter of Belial. Baal was a false god of that territory, of that area, Canaanites, all, all, the, all the entire area where they were living around Jerusalem. A false god. This was the god that as well, was, was challenged by the prophet. A god that cannot and will not answer any prayers. Sadly, the, in chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, we have a record of the sons of Eli. Now, the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Here we have two sons of Eli. We're following a pagan, a false god. Hannah says she's not a daughter of Baal, of Belial, of Belial. She's not a daughter of Belial. Baal is a false god during the time of, of drought. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 19, 1 Kings 18, we have a confrontation with 400 prophets of Baal and one prophet of God. 1 Kings 18, 19, Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto me, unto my Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of the groves, 400. 
which is at Jezebel's table. So that's 450 plus 400, that's 850. So Ahab sent into all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And we'll see, God gives a tremendous victory by answering the prayer of Elijah. The prophet of Baal did not answer the prayers of his prophets. We serve a, a true and a living God. We don't serve a dead God. Again, as we mentioned earlier, there's, there's not perhaps a same type of God that people today are serving or following. But nonetheless, it's a God. It's something that's taking place of the one true God, something that's being put above the God of Israel, put above our Redeemer, Lord Jesus Christ. Anything that takes a place or is a substitute for God is an idol. But in the case of Hannah, she said she was not a daughter of Belial. She was not a daughter of Belial. But she said, out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. She was bringing her burdens before the Lord. And God wants us to bring our burdens to him as well. We want to, in the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, and verse 13, the Bible says, Rend your hearts and not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Here we have pending judgment that's coming upon Israel, and God encourages them to repent. Rending the garments is an outward thing. We, rend, we did rend the garment, and that's an outward sign. It's supposed to be an outward sign of an inward feeling. When people rent their clothes, rent their garments, it was to show, demonstrate the fact to everybody else around them that they were feeling sad and sorrowful on the inside. But the prophet Joel says, rend your hearts and not your garments. Sometimes our hearts have to be corrected. The way we think about things, the way we observe things must be looked at and our hearts must be changed. In Matthew chapter 15, Matthew 15 and verse Matthew 15, Matthew 15 and verse 8, the Bible tells us about our, the proximity of our heart to God. Matthew 15 and verse 8. This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth, but their but honoreth me with their lips, but and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They were just doing lip service to God, and yet their heart was far from God. We're to, later on in Matthew, the Lord Jesus Christ says that we are to love the Lord our God. Matthew 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. You can't have something, loving something else with your heart, soul, and mind that's taking the place of God. The petition that Hannah brought before the Lord, she wanted to grant it. And later on in verse chapter 1, verse 27 of 1 Samuel, we see that God, in verse 27, And there came a man of God unto Eli, uh, 1 Samuel 1, 27,
And there came a man of God to Eli and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, did I plainly appear unto the house of my father when they were in Egypt in the Pharaoh's house? Okay, that's 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 two twenty seven. That's that's first Samuel two twenty seven, but Samuel one twenty seven. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. So the Lord answered the prayer of of Hannah. She brought the petition to him. You know, in Daniel six, a petition was brought. Daniel brought the petition to the Lord. And the Lord heard him. And as Hannah continued to respond to Eli in verse 18, 1 Samuel 1, 18, and she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Remember, the name Hannah, her name means grace. And she says, Let thine handmaid find grace in by sight. You know, do we have a pure heart? Is our heart pure today? Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty two Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. You know, Hebrews chapter 12, pardon me, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let us partake and digest God's words, the word of God, Let's read the Word of God. Let's study the Word of God. It's a discernment between the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Another verse in that same chapter of Hebrews. Let us therefore become boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in time of need. Find grace and mercy. Hannah said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. We can find grace in the sight of God by coming to him, by coming boldly to the throne of grace. We deserve God's wrath. But because of what was done upon Calvary's cross, because of the consistent justice, mercy, holiness, and loving kindness of God, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Jesus Christ is our mediator. For there's one God and one man. There's one God, the man Jesus Christ. He, he, is our, he, is, he is our mediator. He is the one. When we pray, from our hearts. He is the one. He is our mediator. No longer do we have a need for an earthly mediator. Christ is our mediator. And so is the member of our heart. Is our heart pure? Is our heart right with God? Can we come as Hannah did? As she spoke from her heart with her petition to God knowing that man didn't have a fix to her problem but just God had the fix her problem was a temporal problem but God had the solution the eternal solution when we are in trouble this week perhaps this month when we have burdens upon our hearts, when things don't seem to be going right, when everything around us perhaps is coming unglued, go to God in prayer. Speak to God from your heart. Look to the Word of God to see what things must be changed in our lives. 
It's the perfect law of liberty. Let's look, look into the perfect law of liberty. And as we look into the perfect law of liberty, let us change those things that must be changed. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you that thou hast answered the prayer of Hannah. We have answered the prayers that we have brought before you as well. Allow us today to have a heart that's pure, a heart that's right with thee. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict us of those things that are contrary to thy word. In Jesus' name, amen.